I, I just don't pay attention when I talk, which is like my biggest problem, but also my main source of income. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a thing, isn't it? Hello and welcome to episode 120 of the Misanthropod. I'm Snipe and as always I'm joined by Whip. Say hello. Hello. And I'm also joined by Trainfucker. Say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> he says reluctantly. He says knowing Accurately. it's true. <laughs> so Whip, how are you? And Drummer Matt, how many trains have you fucked this week? I mean I guess I'm fine but I'm very curious as to the answer to the second part of that. I mean technically or... Um, no, uh, okay, it's been a bit, okay. of a, a bit of a dry week, to be honest. Isn't fucking a train always going to be a little dry? Well, yeah, but that's what the oil's for. Yeah, it depends on how much of your own personal lubrication you bring to the table as well. Well, I mean, yeah, I would say, I mean, like, kind of, okay, so I don't know the effect of, like, water-based lubricant on, like, metal, on, on, on like, varnished metal, like, trains and stuff. Um, I would say oil-based lubricant would probably do you a mischief. I don't think that'd be particularly a good <laughs> idea. Because you should never use oil-based um, lubricants, especially, like, look, with, jo- with, with Johnny's or condoms, whatever you call them, because they will damage the condom and make it very unsafe. So it, uh, if you can, always use a water-based. Unless you're fucking a train. Yeah. Um, I mean, why do you think Drummer Slime was ori- originally, like, created? Mm. So is it like... It, sh- it has many uses, but the original purpose was train fucking. Shit, you know, that actually makes a lot of sense in <laughs> it retrospect. It weirdly checks out, right? I really like how the last few episodes have had to point out the fact that we, we can't, we shouldn't swear too much at the start of these. Oh yeah, shit. Um, um, can you make a quick note on our thing uh, that I'm going to have to go through and censor all of those? Um, no, because uh, we're going to have a big long cold open. There's going to be at least 10 seconds and then the intro music will come in and then when I say train fucker, it'll be past the watershed moment. Are you going to make sure that's over 30 seconds? Yes. Because fuck the algorithm. <laughs> Fuck the algorithm. It is a fuck. And I'm going to put my dick in it. And I don't uh, care. They wanted monetization on their channel anyway. Um, <laughs> I mean, us. Us. It pays the rent. Uh, but. Anyway. <laughs> we're bullet. Everyone just said it in their heads. I don't even need to say it out loud anymore. <laughs> what have you been up to, my darling? My sweetness. The light of my life. The apple of my eye. The needle to my thread. The, ap- the, the apple of my banana. The fridge of my kitchen. The Dana to my scully. <laughs> <laughs> I panicked. Yeah, I, know, I could tell. Ah! I could tell. Uh, do you want me to quickly uh, get away from that so yes! your shame is hidden? That would be really nice, okay, great. actually. Um, yeah. So a few things. So we uh, we started a new series, um, Objective Model Reviews, <laughs> um, yeah. which is a very silly thing and is sort of the exact opposite of Codex Compliant. Um, because Codex <laughs> Compliant takes a lot of well, prep work. And... I wouldn't say exact opposite, because they're both enjoyable in different ways. <laughs> Aww, so that's not opposite. Aww, bless you. Drama <laughs> Matt is lovely. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, Codex Compliant is something that requires a lot of prep work. It takes <laughs> weeks to put together. Um, and this is something we can put together quickly in an afternoon. Uh, so it's sort of with zero prep work. Apart from loading up the Games Workshop website, <laughs> so, so did you um, just have a whole bunch of tabs open? Is that how you yes, went through them? Yes. Yeah, clever, clever. It was the easiest way. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, and yeah, uh, so that's that's going to be a thing that will keep uh, appearing on the channel. We'll, we'll play with the format a bit because it's kind of a fun, silly thing. But it will basically be something that appears in between, like the Codex compliant episodes, uh, because it's this just, is not—it's it's just a lot of fun to do. It's it's mm. compared to Codex compliant, it's relatively quick, and it's just silly, fun kind of non-content that you know we also enjoy watch watching like other creators do, but similar things, similar yeah. things. So it's like, yeah, why not? Yeah. It's, it's just fun. Basically, um, the way uh, the way um, we run our channel uh, does us no favours with the algorithms or having a few other bits of content throughout out there yeah. is not a bad idea. The algorithm yeah. doesn't like you know one proper video a month kind of 
stuff. Yeah. Oh no, it hates it hates it. It's like <laughs> honestly, I think if um if it got, if it hated us anymore, it would literally come to our house as a sentient like computer individual and just fucking choke one of us every <laughs> month. That's just how it works. Yeah. yeah, that's just how it works. How else do you think you get your silver play button? You know, you gotta like you gotta get you gotta fist fight the algorithm. You gotta fist fight the algorithm. Yeah. Um, Which is why I've been training <laughs> like Rocky style. I've been beating my meat. I've been running down the street, and I've been hurting my feet. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, that, that's that's a new thing. Um, not a replacement for anything, just an extra thing we'll be putting out, probably like once a month. Yeah. Um, just a fun little thing yeah. we can do. Don't know how long it'll last for, I guess, until it stops being fun. So, yeah. Um, apart any, from any, that, any sneak peeks as to who might be next? Uh, no, because this is a series with zero preparation. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, by definition, you're not allowed to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are forbidden. <laughs> yeah, forbidden. <laughs> right. a polar opposite of Codex from Blind. Um, uh, I also watched the uh, the end of WandaVision because that's ended. Oh, um, I really want to watch it. Well, WandaVision. I won't get. I won't give any spoilers or anything um, because I, I do think it's really good. Um, it's. It's a fun. I think the way I described it was it's a fun series which has moments of greatness. Um, like I, I do think that um, there there is a whole thing where um, the sitcom stuff, uh, which gets weird, weird and subversive, and uh, starts getting into like weird horror elements, really cool. Really like it. That's that stuff is really fun. And then when it gets into more standard MCU stuff, it's it's still fun because the MCU stuff is like at a baseline, just entertaining. Um, it's good stuff that you know a lot. A lot of the MCU stuff is just good action movies. You yeah, can just turn fine. your brain off and enjoy yeah. the big punchies. Um, but uh, but it, it is definitely inferior to the other stuff. And so um, yeah. A lot of people got very mad because all of their pet theories uh, didn't come true. Um, which, yeah, that's that's um, yeah, that's the bigger they are, the yeah. harder they fall. Hmm. Um, although uh, the one thing I've noticed a lot of people noticing, which is like, wow, Paul Bettany's really charming as Vision, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I did, he does I did, seem like a very charming. Dude. I love that he got that role just as like basically a voice role right at the start, and it kind of escalated dramatically throughout. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know how much they had planned ahead. I know, obviously, they had a fair bit of it planned ahead, but they didn't, back at Iron Man days or whatever, they didn't know it was going to do as well as it did, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe they did. Nah. But, yeah. It's a great choice for accepting that gig, I reckon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was it was fun. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, very cool. Um, as... As regards uh, video games, because I have, oh, shit, yeah. in in fact, <laughs> played a little bit of a video game, um, which is that, um, so I, I mentioned a while ago that I was pl- playing through New Vegas again. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yeah, the New yeah, Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I what I've done this time, because I'm going through as my NCR siding uh, legion punching. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, is this your bisexual. your your bisexual punch disaster? Yes, I love her. She's great. <laughs> um, and yeah, she, she just goes right. I have basically made certain parts of the game inaccessible to me because I, I basically <laughs> had a rule that the moment she sees legion, she has to punch them. Oh, okay, okay. I have just realised you've made a bisexual me. Oh, well, maybe a little bit, yeah. Because it's like, oh, so, you know, it's just like, oh, they, they have made certain parts of her life completely inaccessible because she punches Legion like Nazis. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's me. That's definitely me. I have I have burned so many bridges. Um, so, yeah, no, thanks for, like, being like, ha, 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 my wife is a fucking maniac. <laughs> but you know what would be better? If she was married to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, let's be honest. That's like it's like crabs. We're all going to be gay one day, and it's going to be amazing. We we are all. Is that I mean, where life is heading towards? Uh, all yeah, being I'm saying bisexual the, crabs. The, the the peak of human evolution is comparable to the everything in the sea that's just <laughs> trying to evolve. <laughs> Come. <laughs> Matt 
my fuck. Oh my fucking. You know what? We deep it. We deep in this hole. I'm just gonna start talking about New Vegas. <sighs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's no good end point to this conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so uh, when I played through my first uh, my first playthrough in New Vegas the other year, um, I did a couple of the DLCs. I did Old World Blues and Lonesome Road. And by the time I'd done those, like I'd, I was kind of a little bit like sick of um doing things where you're like partitioned off into a separate area and i couldn't just do the game like as normal and just mm. you know interact with this with this quest line at my own kind of pace um so I, I didn't do the other two um so this time i'm doing the other two so i've uh just beaten um honest hearts um which was fine was fine. You I probably no heart of gold. Um, I probably won't do it again, um, which is why I like made a save point before the part where you pick which ending you get, um, and did both of them. Although it turned out that um, I needn't have bothered because when I did the ending, because um, basically on one ending you side with a guy who's like, "No, we must kill everyone forever," um, and oh. another guy who's like, "We should just run away um, forever." And so I initially sided with the let's kill everyone forever guy. Um, sorry, let's kill everyone forever religiously. <laughs> um, um, and so I got, I, and so I, I sided with him and I managed to like stay his hand a bit. And I was like, okay, well, that's probably not the best way to go about this situation. But you know what? I've done it. So I'll do the other one now. Um, there's a bug that can happen uh, where it literally doesn't give you the side quest. So when I got to the end of the quest line, for the, like the fight that final thing, uh, and I go and the uh, the guy's like, oh hey, have you um, uh, have you helped out these guys? And as far as I was aware, I had. So I'm like, yeah, I have. And then he's like, you, you, you piece of shit. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Due to your complacency, so many people have died, but we can't do anything about it now. I guess we just gotta fucking go. Fuck you. I'm like, uh. Uh, what did I do? <laughs> Scene missing. I, I did every quest that was marked on my thing. I did I, what? And yeah, it turns out that there's just a, a reoccurring bug where that doesn't those little side things don't appear. And I was like, oh. I mean, it is a Fallout hmm. game. So. Yeah, uh, that engine is barely holding together. Um, so yeah, uh, I, so I guess that let's kill everyone religiously is uh, the ending. I, I my canonical ending. I'm currently doing Dead Money, which everyone I've spoken to about this seems to believe it is the worst DLC, and I am prone to believe them because it basically throws you into a place and takes all of your weapons off you, and then makes you do like melee fights with people. And mm. if you don't have a character that's kind of specked out for melee, that can be really annoying to do. Mm. Um, like you do have a, you, you do get guns, but they're you know very low ammo because of the sort of situation you're in. Um, fortunately, my character is a puncher. Um, a puncher. Um, spent ninety percent of the game with a power fist, just punching people's heads off. So oh, um, was already in the right position uh, to go into that. <laughs> so it's not. I love so how it's like, hey, lady. We're gonna fuck you up by putting you in this hole and meaning so that you can only punch people and you're like, great! <laughs> Actually, it's this like, is awesome! This is no like, different I, to the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah. no. I, get, I still get to wear my cowboy hat. I ain't give a fuck. No, they take my cowboy hat. Away from <gasps> oh, okay, boo. this is violence. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm doing that currently, just slowly chipping away at it. Um... Oh, also, I, I did a stream uh, last night at time of recording uh, where I built a an old Lego kit, like a, from the mid '90s, a model team kit, oh, and yes. just did that on stream, which was quite fun. <laughs> um, it's one I had from a kid, and I basically spent the entire time finding out all the pieces that are missing from it. <laughs> well, when uh, you say it's one you had from a kid, you presumably mean where from when you were a kid, not one that you just stole off some other kid. Oh yeah, no, yeah, no, he yeah. stole this off. Yeah, a child. I stole it off a child. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, yes, it was that I had when just, I just was a child. The way you phrased it, I was like, um. <laughs> <laughs> fair, Sorry. fair. Uh, yes, no, it was one that I had when I was a wee child. Um, a wee child. And I don't have much of my Lego left from that. I mean, I still have a huge mm. cardboard box full of it, but compared to what I had, that is a fraction. <laughs> uh, I was I was a, a Lego child, and then I I got rid of it all in my hubris. Um, but um, but this is one of the ones I kept. And yeah, model team is an interest. I have always liked them because you know um, 
You know, like the modern Lego Technic big kits, like yeah, yeah, the the Lamborghinis, the Bugattis, and the Porsches. Those really big ones that are that are like branded and they look like the thing they're supposed to be, mm. and they have like all working components inside. Um, like Model Team was sort of the equivalent of that back in the day, except Lego Technic was more primitive back then, so it 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 was closer to regular Lego, but with holes in and lots of cogs. I always wanted Lego Technic, but I never got it because it was quite pricey even for Lego. There's literally a huge box of it if you want to play with some. I am past it. Okay, I'm I'm over it now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've healed. I've moved on. Um, but what uh, what model team was was they would effectively you would have like the raw skeleton of something that would be built using kind of Lego Technic stuff so that it would have like steering and things like that like the well standard in Lego Technic stuff. But then the rest of it would be built out of standard Lego, so and they'd try and make it look like a real thing, and so it was much bigger in scale. Like it was about um it was about the sort of size of if you if you remember the Lego Technic minifigures, the ones that are uncomfortably long. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um it's about they're like they, the model team stuff is a bit all over the place in scale, but roughly speaking it's around that kind of scale, so it's much bigger. Um, and yeah, uh, I always really liked them because yeah, they, they. I guess I, I guess like the speed champion stuff you get now is kind of similar to it in a way as well. Uh, and those are some of the nicest modern kits. Um, if you don't know, they're ones that are like real cars, but like licensed cars, but like they fit minifigures. Um, they're great. <laughs> okay, I love the idea that I could get like a really sexy car, like a like a Mustang or like a Lego Mustang and just put like that crocodile guy in there or like that um, Rio de Janeiro, like a uh, Mardi Gras mini- like yeah. minifigure I got you in. It. It just, it's like, that's fucking, that's my jam. The first thing I did when I built this thing, um, this model team van, um, was I tried to put uh, my knockoff Ultraman minifig inside <laughs> it. Unfortunately, his head was a bit too big. Oh, it no. couldn't fit in. Because uh, even though the scale is bigger on these things, um, they're not meant to have figures put inside them, so they don't like they don't really fit in them properly. Yeah. So it's, yeah. You know, I do. You know what I want to do once it's safe to. I want to go to a, like there's a toy store, um, in Derby that's got that's, 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 it must be like the ceilings must be like twenty five feet high. It's massive, and like there's these huge aisles of just like Lego behind glass. These massive fuck off dioramas and these gigantic like three feet long like technic cars mm. and i just want to go and look at them <laughs> i just want to fucking look at them I, because I, they are so cool to behold like i am i am an old fogey do you and i'm to... still like lego is the shit do you want to go to legoland one day Ye- yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just no my brain had like a buffering moment because i remember a girl at school being like oh we went to like um I can't remember what theme park it was, but they they stayed in like the Cadbury's room and they had chocolate coming out the taps. And my brain went, huh. "Oh yeah, Legoland. You stay in the hotel and Lego comes out the taps." And I'm like, "Wait, <laughs> wait, no." So yeah, my brain had a bit of a buffering moment because <laughs> this is useless to wash with. But chocolate's fine. Um, also, at any given point, there's like people fucking in like the Disney hotel because there's literally a, a very special honeymoon suite. That overlooks like the park. This is like in Florida. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. and it's like I don't think you can even like rent it. You have to like enter a fucking lottery basically, and then you can get your honeymoon there. But you still have to pay like loads of money and shit. And there's this like people be fucking in Disneyland. Yeah, there's always people fucking in Disneyland. It's like oh my god, do you think people are fucking in like the little like mouse tunnels underneath? Definitely, definitely. Like, there's there's, some, there's at least some like over the shirt action going on in the park. I mean, Do what you, you think they would fuck in the costumes? The mascot costumes, yeah, one hundred percent. Can you imagine like turning a corner and seeing Stitch taking it from behind from like Gaston? <laughs> <laughs> wow! And that was Do the you... day the magic died for me. I'm honestly, I'm or wondering... a new kind of magic was born. Well, yes, it's like. Do you think that the people are like? Because there will be sex perverts that go to Disneyland. Okay, where are you fucking going with this? <laughs> Just, 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 just let it happen. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It, it's, it's all uh, in context. Yeah, sure. Um, can you imagine like going up to like Gaston or something and be like, "Hey, man, like, I'll give you like two hundred dollars if you just like rail me behind the toilets, <laughs> like in character." 
Like, there's got to be someone, like, someone who goes around propositioning these poor fucking people. Because, <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not suffering enough working with the public and acting as a character. And getting thrown up on by, like, kids like me who's had too many Freddos and decided to spend an hour in the bouncy castle. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. That's another thing. Okay, so cosplay escorts. Why isn't that a thing? It probably is. I mean, it probably is, but I think it should be a lot more widely accepted. It's like, yeah, no, I don't really fancy an escort, but I will fuck Hatsune Miku. And then it's just somebody shows up at your house dressed as Hatsune Miku. Miko? Yeah, Miko. there we go. Hatsune Miku and just, like, does the sex with you, or I don't know, watches uh, Bones is the TV series. I'm sure this conversation is getting away from you, Summer Fears. <laughs> Nothing is ever in my possession. You know this by now. <laughs> Wait, how did the what? stream go? It went quite well. Uh, aside no from one liked um, the fact that he called himself Uncle Wib. No, they didn't like that. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was no, either that or uh, Daddy, so you know. I would have called myself Daddy. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was a, a fun thing. Uh, I it did it did have a trailer and like a um, a boat on it. But given how many pieces have been lost in like the five house moves I've had since I last <laughs> yeah. built it, I was like, mm, yeah, no, this is already uh, this is already a bit of a, a thing. So yeah, if it helps, you showed me the completed model and you showed me all the little like um like fixes and kind of counts as you you did and honestly it looked great oh yeah like at the you end you did an amazing job of it really. thank you at the end of the stream yeah i basically f tried to patch over all the parts where there was pieces missing by substituting parts or mm. um rebuilding areas so it wouldn't matter that pieces were missing and yeah yeah it went together quite well um but yeah apart from that i have one last thing to talk about um which is i really want to do the voice please don't because it blow up the microphone mm. um which is, I have been watching Robot Wars. <laughs> okay, you can go to the other side of the room and okay, do it okay, so it doesn't okay, blow the okay, microphone Okay, out. okay, okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. It's Robot Wars! Okay, I'm coming back. That was worth it. <laughs> okay, you're happy now. <laughs> That was great. Okay, thing. so uh, for those not aware, and um, I want to do it again. Uh, you're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> for those for those not aware, um, you know, Robot Wars is a show in which people make little remote control robots and then they fight them against. And by each little, other. you mean they're fucking okay. They're actually huge. They're, they're like right? they're like five feet long. <laughs> they're always twice as big as you think they actually yeah. are. Mm. Um, now this was um, on British TV. From like 1997 to like it was the 98. early 98. 98? Yeah. Do oh. you remember we looked it up because you were like, oh, because you have this weird gift. I think it's a mutant power. Where like, I, I was talking about Mean Girls and you were like, oh, when did that come out? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And you were like, mm, 2004. And then we checked and it was exactly 2004. And like, you're just really good at guessing when things came out. But this was the one time you were a year off. And oh, that's no, I'm why a year off quite it. often. But like, I'm pretty good at eyeballing like things for some reason. <laughs> Shut your butt. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, late nineties went led into the two thousands. It got brought back um, a couple of years ago for a, for a few more series, um, and it's just yeah a competition where people build their own the, their own the, these kind of weapons of war and fight them against each other um, in various challenges and different things. And yeah, um, and as a kid, I fucking loved it uh, because it's, it's 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 kind of like Warhammer in the way that it is just an institution. It is just mm. if you are a child from this time segment in Britain <laughs> you will fucking love Robot Wars you will have yeah. experienced it same with Warhammer 40k yeah and I mean it's all it's been exported around the world and um like it, it's a bit I'm not like I know there's BattleBots which is like the American version but I'm not sure which one actually came first and I know that it was um a thing that was done without being on TV for a while beforehand as well underground robot fight club. yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> that's how it like started um <laughs> And it's been done ever since, even when it's not been on TV. Um, but I've been watching the TV series because it's just all on YouTube. Uh, all the old ones are, anyway. Um, I'm currently up to series four. Um, How many series are there? Oh, there's like seven in the original run, I think. Is it... How many like things are how many episodes per series? It differs each oh, time. Okay, okay, okay. Um, the first one is like six episodes, like a standard, standard kind of BBC English, commission yeah. series. And after that they they were a lot longer. Okay. Yeah, and they do world championships and stuff. Um, but what's been really interesting is watching it through and watching the escalation of it. 
because mm. one of the one of the cool things is that like you watch the first series and it's a bit crap. Um, Didn't they used to do like different challenges and things rather than just punch each other? Yes, they used to do like obstacle courses and things like that. In the um, normal words of uh, line. I don't know what you're going to say, so I can't help you. Yeah, in the immortal words of Max Shrek from Batman Returns, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Fucking hell, love. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yawn. There you go. See, it's funnier because I fucked it up like eight times, and I am a disaster. I was going to say, do you want us to cut that? But no, that whole thing is staying in. No. No. Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is how my brain works, or more specifically, how it does not. Um... Also, you remember your, your, your dad popped around to have a socially distant visit. And he literally was like, you should have your own stand-up show. And I was like, I did when I was like nine. And he was like, also, I like it, however, the podcast. Hi, Kev. Yeah, he listens. <laughs> Which is really weird for me when I start talking about butts and stuff, let me tell you. <laughs> but he's a gentleman and pretends, that he, you know, doesn't bring it up. But yeah, and the way he says, like, you can you can hear Whip. Like, you can almost hear him roll his eyes at you. And I'm like, yeah, you you can. <laughs> He's got very dry eyeballs. It's like sandpaper with like a you know pretty low grade sandpaper, um, but it's still there. Sorry, you were saying? I was saying yeah. um that yes. Um so the first series of Robot Wars is a bit crap, um, comparatively, because everything's really basic. So like it starts off at that point and no one really knows what's going to work. So everything's slow. You've got things trying out different weapons, 90% of which literally don't do anything to an opponent. Like, oh, we've got this like punishing axe. And then you see it come down on a bit of sheet metal and it just makes a tiny, tiny, tiny dint. <laughs> Scratches the paint, maybe. Um, and then as time goes on, like you get to like season two and by that point they figured out, okay, wedge, wedge shaped robots that can flip people over and maybe have a pneumatic ram on them can, to flip people off. War. That works really well. And um, by season three, that's become like the dominant kind of thing. Um, the, meta, uh, the meta. The meta is <laughs> wedge shaped robots with flips on them that can flip people over. Um, it started, it really started that kind of thing with a, um, a robot called Cassius. It was built by a guy called Rex Garrod, um, who is the guy who built Brum from the TV series, <laughs> uh, which is my favorite bit of Robot Wars trivia. Yeah, it's the best. I um, just wanted to see a weaponized Brum. Yeah. Uh, Rex Garrod like, is also... Brum with like a pneumatic fucking axe on yeah. it or something. Rex Garrod is also just seemingly just a really nice guy. Like he... Yeah, rest in peace, dude. Yeah, he he like went at... Would go after... Like if he, he came up against kids, like a, a team in with kids life, on it. Just yeah, he'd fight children. kids. Uh, but no, if you came up against a robot that had kids on the team or was built by partially by kids, he'd be like, I'm not going to destroy it. I'm going to... Basically, he'll go in and he'll try and lightly flip it over so that it doesn't get damaged, and then he'll go after um, the house robots, which I'll talk about those in a second. <laughs> um, and he'd just go and do that. Like, he'd try and do it, like, the most uh, the most kind of, like, that kind of way. Um, and then by season three, lots of people were imitating his style because his robot, Cassius, was also really quick. And it basically that became sort of the, the dominant thing that never really stopped being effective. Um, mm. Like, when it came back, um, Apollo, I think, won the first series. I might be, I might be the second series. I can't remember offhand, uh, and that was just a wedge-shaped robot with a big, powerful flipper. Like it just never, it just never really stopped working. Um, but then as time goes on, like more destructive robots started to appear, like Hypno Disc, that was a big, like <laughs> weighted, <laughs> weighted, <laughs> uh, weighted spinning disc that would hit things. And like the first couple of opponents it came on, came up against, had to basically be taken out in like black bags. They were just body in pieces. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Um, and then people started getting used to that, and they up armored, um, and every Escalation. and everyone started having self writing mechanisms. Oh so, yes, the the Shremek. Yes, I listen to things <laughs> so they can <laughs> flip themselves back over if they get turned on on their top. Um, and so it's just interesting to watch this like escalation and like reaction to different metas coming in and disappearing. 
and like everyone's starting to have to have answers to certain robots. It's really fascinating. And then, of course, one will just show up in like season four that has basically no weapons, is made out of fiberglass and <laughs> has no way to turn itself over. And then it gets murdered in like 15 seconds flat. Um, it just occasionally happens. And you're like, wow, OK. What about that one that was literally just an orb of carbon fiber with a fucking spike that just came out the mouth and was all the robots it was fighting were just just like half an inch shorter than where the spike came out. <laughs> that was Destructobubble. 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 Great fucking name there. Um, yeah, some of the names were great, right? Oh, yeah, there like... one called The Big Cheese that was literally just a big yeah. wedge of fucking cheese. And yeah, I'm but like, then that was... stop. But that was replaced by Wheelie Big Cheese that was another big wedge of cheese, but it had big wheels. I'm so angry! <laughs> Also, the earlier ones always... Oh, there was one called fucking, like... Oh, what was it? There was one called, like, Steve? Eric. Eric! (laughs) Eric. (laughs) It's just like, oh, and here comes fucking, like... Like, fucking anal blood puncher versus Eric. And you're like, oh, I hope Eric wins. The best part is is that the commentator, which is um, who Snipe was doing an impression of earlier, when she just went off into the corner and shouted, it's Robot Wars... I can um, do that again. Who I literally forget his name every single time I have a conversation about this. <laughs> Craig Charles. Um, it's Charles. not Craig Charles. No. I know. <laughs> um, is it not Craig Charles doing the... Did he just no, do the intro? I, he, just, he just does like... He, he's the presenter, but he's yeah. not the commentator. Uh, okay. Um, he does sound like... I mean, to my non-English ears, he does sound like... I just always thought it was Craig Charles. No, it is 1,000% not. So it is one. Not. Yes, it is 1% not. <laughs> okay, it is one not. Okay. It, it is not him, no. Thank you. Um, okay. There's actually, like, a lot of presenters to the show. There's, um, you've got Craig Charles, who's, like, the, suppo- he's technically the main presenter. Then you've got the voiceover guy, um, who is not to be mistaken for the commentator. Uh-huh. Um, and then you have uh, someone uh... someone in the pits, who for most of it was Philippa Forrester. Yeah. And there's a different person in Series 4, who I've also forgotten the name of, because I'm terrible with names. You are. Um, and that's okay. It doesn't mean you like these people any less. It just means you're bad with names. <laughs> but yeah, the main commentator, uh, he has he reacts the same way throughout the whole series. So like, when he f- when we first see Cassius flip itself over and it literally like launches itself into the air using an air powered ram to flip itself over in the air, and it's the first time anyone saw that. Or when Hypno Disc tears something to pieces. Or when Razor pierces holes straight through something. He's like, oh yeah, this is the best. This is total mayhem and destruction. It's Robot Wars. But his re- his um, his reactions were the exact same in season one. Where like a thing would lightly nudge another one and a decorative <laughs> element would fall off. And he'd be like, this is total mayhem. Oh, it's amazing. Can he you re- imagine this guy? <laughs> In fucking Tesco. <laughs> I can't believe there are these biscuits on here and oh my god, they have Tesco value biscuits. Oh my god, this is amazing. And it's like, yeah, someone drops a can. He's like, oh, it's Bedlam in aisle 14. Yeah. Oh, Vera's yeah. dropped the chunky tomato soup. Oh, it's Robot Wars. It's great. Like, he just has the same <laughs> level of excitement the entire time. It's, it's I, I imagine, like, that's just how he is 90% of the time. It's like, Deborah, could you get the newspaper for me? I'm having a shit! It's Robot Wars! And she's like, every day is hard. You've not done the, you've not done the show for 17 years, Kenneth. I don't know what his real name is. I'm sorry. Uh, Jonathan, I think. John, it is Jonathan Pierce. That's his name. There you go. I, I just love the idea that that's he, he's, how he's he a talks. football commentator as well, and also a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I enough. really but, hope I mean, he breaks out that voice in the bedroom. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, you've got I, to uh, assume. Well, I mean, He's basically that character from Monkey Dust. Yeah, but like... Don't watch Monkey Dust, don't kids. Don't watch Monkey Dust. It's fucking dark <laughs> it's and dark not funny. Uh, um, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, so I've been having a lot of fun with that. The other thing I really noticed uh, is that the house robots um, are um, an interesting thing. So like, what they did was they, they had um, a bunch of robots. Initially there was four, but they gradually started introducing more and more as the series went on. Um, the original four were called Shunt, Dead Metal, Sergeant Bash, and Matilda. Matilda is the fucking best. Uh, you Ma- can't convince me otherwise. And um, they're also, they all don't have to adhere to the rules that the robots do, because the robots have various rules, like they can't have certain weapons, like they can't have like um, hardened blades that well, might have, like, shatter. They have um, like weight limits. Yeah, they stuff. have weight limits. They can't have things like flamethrowers or projectile weapons. There's all manner of little little rules in there. 
Um, but the house robots aren't <laughs> restricted by any of these things. So one of them has a flamethrower, and they're heavier, uh, more powerful. Uh, are you okay there? <laughs> no, I was just like... Oh, I'd like to make a robot for Robot Wars. And then you were like, no projectile weapons. And I was like, I'm just going to enter a Roomba with a like a handgun on it. <laughs> just duct tape like, to the top of yeah, it. Yeah, just like a fucking M9 <laughs> duct tape to a fucking Roomba. Well, a lot of them, a lot of the robots um, uh, uh, have their shells made out of uh, polycarbonate, which they keep saying is bulletproof, it despite is not. that not being the case. It is objectively not the case. Oh, my God. You can tell because the, because Shunt has a big axe and it just pierces straight through it. Yeah, and it, it if, if if an axe can do it, what do you think something breaking the fucking sound barrier will do? It's like, it's bullet resistant. Yeah, That's a different resistant. thing. It, as anyone who's worn a water resistant watch in the pool will know. Yeah, resistant, <laughs> resistant and proof, proof are different things. You're like shadow resistant rulers who I saw break more than any other type of ruler. That's because people would try to. It was very fun. <laughs> um... But yeah, and these house robots are like these big power things, and they look really cool. Um, my personal favorite is Shunt. As a, when I was a kid, I preferred Dead Metal, but these days I'm a Shunt guy. I think it's because it looks like something an orc would build. It's mm. like they all have backstories as well. I was like reading <laughs> up about them. They're all supposed to back like like Shunt is supposed to be like an ex-Soviet like what um like w- like nuclear waste disposal bot or some oh shit like that it's oh my god nonsense. oh my god the bots are literally rainbow six siege operators yes yeah okay yeah and that, if you want to know oh, the the okay. level of like um uh, of naming conventions like i've told you the first ones ones that were added later uh, the two biggest ones were sir kill a lot and mr psycho <laughs> <laughs> that, that mr psycho sounds like Sounds like a fucking 90s FPS, like, boss. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, Mr. Psycho, he was a bomb disposal expert from the Soviet Union. (laughs) And he comes out and he goes, Harusho, because no one knows anyone who's actually Russian. Um, Now the thing is, like, when they started introducing these bigger house, like, later house robots, because the initial four... Like, I think because they introduced that when they made them and they didn't know what other people would be entering... Um, so they quickly, you kind of quickly find out they're all a little bit shit in their, like, early appearances. Like, I don't remember that from when I was a kid, but watching them through again, I'm like, these get pushed around all the time. I because like just, they, like, comparatively, because you'll, like, you'll be used to the kind of, like, the, the total mayhem. No, 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 it's not to do with that at all. No? It, it's because when they were initially put in, their weapons weren't as powerful. They weren't as strong or as heavy. And so they get pushed around a lot. Um, and the drivers weren't as good at them either. So, like, uh-huh. Shunt especially looks like it must have been a nightmare to drive in those early seasons. Because if it was anywhere near a pit or a... Or a um, or, or, like, any kind of drop, it would, like, aim for it. They'd, like, try... Or, like, they'd try and drive up a ramp and it'd just slide off the side. Like, they had, like, a sumo competition where they had to drive into the centre of it. And, like, on a couple of occasions, it just basically fell off it. <laughs> it's just because just it was like, oh, shit, it just drove badly. Maybe they were going full mess. But, yeah, they get kicked around and knocked around all the time and tipped over constantly. And it's only sort of later on when they introduced the more heavily, uh, like, things like Sir Killalot, who was big enough that he could physically pick up competitors' robots. Oh. <laughs> um, and, and, like, they started to get more dangerous again. Uh, and, like, they were like, okay, we need to make these because they're getting beaten up, beaten up a lot by competitors. Uh, I think in a later series, someone did actually manage to toss one of them out of the arena. <laughs> Get it. Because um, that became a thing. I think it's in season three. Uh, there's a robot called Chaos 2. Um, oh, that boy. Um, which what, which is what I think was one of the most successful ones that was ever in it. Um, and it, it entered, I think it was one of the semifinals. And it just l- literally hurled an opponent out of the arena. And they were like... We d- we thought we were going to get disqualified for that because there's no rules for it because <laughs> well, I mean, no one expected like anyone have, to do like, it. Hardened steel on them or anything. <laughs> Fucking yeah. like there was that was that one robot where it had like a spinning disc on it, and then like the next time because it's like they replaced it with like hardened fucking like metal, which is one of the oh you, you yeah it was it was a, a bot called um, Pussy Cat. Um, that was made by the team that did uh, Body Hammer in the early seasons, and um, it had a spinning disc on it, 
um, but they replaced it with like a, a, a hardened one um, later on, um, which um, they claim. Qualifiable yeah, offense. they claim they didn't. They didn't know it was against the rules. And why did uh, they put it on originally? But they only put. But they they put it on in the last fight of the episode. Mm. Um, so I kind of mm. I, I kind of suspect they knew and they thought they could get away with it. Yeah. And it basically hit the sidewall and it shattered and they got disqualified for it. Yeah, because that could have fucking killed something. Yeah, that's the reason. Uh, apparently, because in the first season, um, uh, Jeremy Clarkson presents it, Ugh. Uh, which does make mm. first season a little bit awkward to look through because <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to look at Jeremy Clarkson. Ugh. Um, but uh, but Cold he apparently nearly got he, yeah he, he apparently nearly got fucking killed um, oh, because um, a blade came off something and flew and hit the back wall behind him like embedded itself. <laughs> in it the was wall. a warning. The machines were fighting back. <laughs> mm. Fuck you, Clarkson, you racist piece of shit. But yeah, so in short, I have been having a lot of fun watching Robot Wars and could talk about it forever. Stay stay tuned for uh, my new podcast that I will <laughs> definitely be starting. <laughs> Called Robot Wars. Robot Wards. Oh my uh-huh. god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, talk, I'll talk, call up my dad and say, hey, do you want oh a podcast? Because <laughs> yes. I was about to say, there is no fucking way I'm doing a Robot Wars podcast with you. <laughs> like, Robot Wars is fine, but holy shit. <laughs> I'm probably not going to do that, but I have just been having a lot of fun watching it. And it's, it's been, it, I've been recapturing some part of my childhood, and it's been great. Mm. Um, Sorry, I can't get over robot wards. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's terrible. too much. It's too it perfect for you not to do it now. It reminds oh, oh no, me. I'll, I'll message. Uh, I'll message Matt Ward on Twitter and say, yeah! "Hey, do you want to do robot Matt Wards?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would be that would be legit. But yeah, it reminds me of something Drama Matt said to me when we the day we got married. Yeah. Which was he kind of leaned over with like a, a glass of champagne and was like, "You know, I suspect you only got married so your surname would be would have war in it." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh yeah, I didn't think of that." <laughs> that was a weird day. <laughs> Um, but that that is all I have to talk about. I'm sorry I spent so long talking about Robot Wars. You are Robot... not I'm fucking not okay. sorry. You loved every fucking second of it, and you, and the only reason you do it because you saw me literally just looking at the timestamps, being like, <laughs> hmm. <sighs> I'm probably not going to make that podcast. I'm sorry, everyone. I think I'm sorry. It made a fun joke though. Like, comment, <laughs> like, tell Wib he should make a podcast because it's nice to hear people talk about things they like, even if I don't quite like them as much as they do. <laughs> Yes. Um, Matthew, Matthew, Hello. Hello. What, what what have you been up to? If you say bro, what was this? This podcast is dead. <laughs> I, I have. I, I have oh not. But I really want to now. <laughs> no. um, I was very tempted when you put it put it on Twitter, and I was like, oh, I should do that, and then didn't. But now you've spoken about it, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Um, no, I've been watching a, uh, watching a few bits and bobs. First up, we've been watching the Harley Quinn cartoon. Oh, I I need to watch it. It's yeah, so have, good. Have either of you watched it? I feel like we've spoken about we've it. We've watched yeah. the entire run. Uh, and he did, keeps have you spoken about it on the minutes. podcast? I have, yes. yes. Uh, and okay. it's, it's great. It is I love it. really, really good. I mean, we've not finished it yet. We're like towards the end of the first series. Okay. But, oh, it's so good. Oh wait. Well, we've accidentally watched the first half of like one of the episodes halfway through series two because I didn't notice when I was clicking on it it was series two episode seven or whatever <laughs> it was rather than series one. So we watched half of it. We're like, this feels like things are happening that haven't been explained yet, or like what? And then yeah, yeah, it's it's um a really a really, really, series. really I, good. It did it take you a, a little bit of time to adjust to the level of swearing and violence? Fucking the poor. Honestly, no. Who we were just like, like yeah, this, this, I mean, this checks out for Harley Quinn. Like, t- cool. To be fair, you are friends with, like, us. <laughs> we live under the power lines of the mm. word fuck. Like, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like, a problem, but it was just... I, I, mm. I was not expecting quite as much as there was. I was like, oh, oh, okay. Um, had, uh, like, my one thing I, I thought about it when I was watching it is that it feels like... So, how far through Venture Brothers did you get, Matt? Um... Definitely up to the point where it started coming out really sporadically. Um, yeah, because I mean, like I, a season every few years. Cause yeah, yeah. Anime. So then I kind of forgot about it because it didn't come out often enough. Yeah, so but the very, relatively far way through, I think. Yeah, because the very end of that, because I, I I watched through the whole thing. Um, was it last year? I think. Um, and like it, it's Venture Brothers has a really shaky start because it's full of slurs and like some of the humors. 
really shitty and there's a lot of transphobic jokes and it's it, it's, it's so of its time yeah um but there's like the nucleus of something really cool there um like and over time they shed like all of the baggage and by the end of it um when it got cancelled they were really like it was just really cool like they were really doing some nice stuff um and i was enjoying it a lot and it's sad that it got cancelled but I'm really glad that Harley Quinn is here because Harley Quinn is effectively the same kind of series. It's like, you know, it's like the Ventures, but with recognizable DC villains and heroes. So, but it's the same sort of idea. And it feels like this is sort of carrying on from where Venture Brothers left off, except you don't have to watch through three seasons <laughs> yeah. going, oh, I wish they wouldn't keep using that word. Uh, so it's great. I, I love Harley Quinn. It's a good series. Yeah, I yeah, I didn't think I had much to add because I thought we'd spoken about it before. But yeah, mm. can confirm it is very very good. Um, mm. The other thing I wanted to talk about, which is going to be slightly, bear with me. Okay, we started watching Buffy. A, uh, uh, which, a a very uh, a, a very good time to be doing so, and I yeah, use well, the word "good" in inverted commas. Yeah, so we started watching it. And I had I'd managed to somehow like, and I don't know how long the whole Joss Whedon fall from grace has been happening for, but I've managed to basically avoid it all, not intentionally, just I just hadn't no happened to notice. Um, so we started watching it, and then I started, and then relatively soon after we started watching it, we st- I started. Like, I saw it online, and I was solving like the various allegations and things. I was like. Oh, this was probably not a good time to then bring this up on the podcast. But I was like, well, actually, it does lead to an interesting conversation. I thought so. Before we get into that, I used to, I watched Buffy in in on you know various times as a kid and caught the odd episode, but I never actually watched it through. And liking Firefly and liking various other bits and bobs, I was like, well, you know, I should check it out at some point. And I kept trying, but it's just it's so dated and not even in terms oh, of anything is. overly offensive i mean there there is that as well cuz i'd say the first series but, is yeah, like it's just so kind dated of bad mm. you know? so i've tried a few times to get through i've just not been able to get through the first episode or two for ages and we're like no no let's stick it out let's stick it out people like it let's let's give it a try so we started doing that and then yeah we kind of yeah it's an interesting time to bring it up and talking about it mm. but tangentially to that I, I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to ask about in terms of watching things made by people that turn out to be, oh, yeah, I don't want to be giving them money or encouragement. And it's just, yeah, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Like, in terms of, should we just not watch anything? Because I feel like if we wa- don't watch anything made by bad people in, like, Hollywood, we'd end up not watching anything. And that's not justifying them in any way. But, and obviously, if people are making things now, going forward, you can put pressure on people to, like the... um. I can't remember the actress actor's name in in the Mandalorian was it? Gina so you, Carano. That's the one. So you can put pressure on people to like you know get rid of bad people. You know, great, excellent. But you can't retroactively go and do that, especially things from ten, mm. twenty, fifty years ago. Mm. I mean, I personally feel that in in an ideal world, everyone would just be like, "No, I refuse to watch this." Even though, like, I mean, I fucking love Firefly. Buffy was incredibly. Um, incredibly important to me during my formative years. It's like, hey, look at this girl who's like, mm. who likes painting her nails and doing her hair nice, but can also kick your fucking ass everywhere. And I'm like, she is gold. She's amazing. However, Joss Whedon is a piece of shit. <laughs> but like, I and like, yeah, in a, in a perfect world, it'd be like, well, I now I'll never watch Firefly and I'll never watch Buffy and I'll never read my favorite run of X Men comics or anything again, and never have a craving for it. But that's just not the fucking way it works. And it does suck that people have suffered for art you can enjoy, like, so fucking much. Mm. It really is so awful. But I mean, I kind of like this... Personally, I can still watch Firefly because a script is, like, you know, is, is good, bad, whatever. A lot of the time, actors and stuff make it. So I tend to fixate on more mm, of the acting okay. and the actors. Because, I mean, Joss Whedon is not a story writer. He is a character writer. Um, which is not, again, like, of all the negative things I'll say about him, that's not one of them. Because writers, you know, you, you, everyone creatively has a certain thing that they they do more of. Joss Whedon writes one character. He, okay, he writes one woman. <laughs> <laughs> 
but no um so it's like you know i i kind of i kind of go no i i I can still enjoy this and it's like of course this is not to say that there's certain people who uh stuff i i like or have liked that have done some incredibly abhorrent fucking things um not don't, don't want to dwell too much on it but say like the lost prophets um mm. really fucked up stuff if you really want to google it i big warnings there um yeah it's just like i can't listen to any of that music at all and the thing is i think because it's music it's easier to not consume mm. but when it's like a a tv show or a movie there's so many elements in that creation. There's like, oh, I just really like this actor anyway. And, you know, I really like the way he he or she or they deal with the with the character and like the this the flair they put on it, or like like this and like all oh, you know, my favorite makeup artist works on this sci-fi and oh they're fantastic. It's so it's I see it's a lot harder to disconnect from that kind of stuff. Mm. Um that's that's like I, this is not a prepared statement so I <laughs> there might be holes yeah. in it I know mm. I think yeah. you but know, I'm, um... I'm not saying that you're a bad person for enjoying a bad person's work it's just I I feel like it's kind of like consuming quote unquote problematic media it's fine to consume it just be aware mm. of its yeah, issues that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's probably um, a really good I, I think yeah the, there's the big thing um, which you touched upon there which is the when you're talking about like it's one thing where, like, oh, if X YouTuber who is a bad person, um, <laughs> not watching their content, fine, that that's that's like a thing because you can just completely cut that off because it's just them. It only benefits them, and it is and a very, that is person. a very direct, like, that's a very views, direct, yeah. a very that is yeah. very direct, directly yeah. transactional. That's that's a very direct thing. Whereas when you're talking about a TV show, hundreds of people work on a TV yeah. show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we uh, there's that whole thing of like you know as as humans we have this horrible habit of attributing um, great works to single people, yeah, um, as opposed to like especially movies and TV oh, yeah. shows. You just sit there and go, oh, Steven Spielberg. What a fucking genius, Jurassic Park. It's like, yeah, no, it's Phil Tippett. And then, like, the 30 people he had working for him. Yeah, and, like, you know, the the, the the hundreds of other people who were helping him keyframe shit, who were, like, doing the makeup for the actors. Like, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, like... It's, it's, and it's like a fucking ecosystem yeah, of and that, people. And, and so there is that thing where, like, um, on, on the one hand, um, like... I don't like I, I again not a prepared statement but sometimes you know <laughs> you watch sort of like there's some things that have been made and like it was a bad experience for certain actors uh, actors and things and to then um never treat it as if it existed does kind of say well then all that shit you went through is for nothing mm. Um, it, it is but that's very... also not. But that's also. I don't. I don't mean that per se, because that makes out like it's worth. It's worth going through bad things for good art. It is a which is very not the case. difficult um, philosophic mm. problem. Mm. Um, there's this. There's the, um, uh, the Mass Effect. Uh, there's an analogy to kind of like uh, eugenics in that. Um, where there's a point where you can go, oh yeah, this this absolute fucking monster scientist, this is evil, fucking piece of shit, has tortured, has like in, like tricked like Krogan because uh, very quickly Krogan like have very low fertility rates, so they're like um, you know that stillbirth and just miscarriages are sky high because of a a weird fucking like. The genophage. Vi- like, the genophage, which was a virus created to control their population. It's really fucked up and horrible. So this scientist is like, oh yeah, let's go and just basically just do whatever I want to all these Krogan women who are having trouble conceiving. Um, and the thing is, it gives you a conundrum. It goes, okay, well, we can destroy the data. Um, which means that, yes, all these people have died and horribly. Like, they have suffered immensely. But if we keep it, we can use this as building blocks to actually help cure them. And it's like, wow, that mm. that there's there's the mm. philosophical moral cannot because like neither. You see, of I'm them... going to be honest. You are also leading then into a Nazi stuff. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. That leads into an interesting point because that story in and of itself is an issue because that effectively offers um, a. 
it, it reinforces a myth about the shit the Nazis did, which is that it had some medical value because most of the shit the Nazis did, they would like it. There's that myth that, Ugh. oh, yes, they did all these terrible things, but we did get some, you know, modern medicine from it. Not that's not really true. Um, they they just fucked around and just hurt people, and yeah. so that in in and of itself is a, is an interesting perspective <laughs> yeah. of, of a problematic piece of a uh, piece of uh, media. However, in the context of the game and the moral choice, it is a fucking minefield. And the thing is, I don't, I honestly could never say. I don't think if I sat in a room and thought about it for twenty five years, I could come up with the the quote unquote correct answer. Mm. I don't think I could come up with the quote unquote morally correct answer because it is an absolutely abhorrent fucking situation. Mm. And like, I appreciate that's a bit extreme for the analogy we're using, <laughs> mm. but you know what I mean. It's the kind mm. of like, it's yeah, it's like okay, I could stop watching. Anything that has, like, one specific, like, you know, writer on board. And, like, say we all did that, and it's like, okay, well, what about all the other hundreds of people? Yeah. Yeah, because like, one of the ways we got around it, um, when we wanted to, we wanted to watch, um, I think I said a while ago on the podcast, we watched American Beauty. But we're like, well, kind of don't Kevin want to Spacey's encourage Kevin Spacey. So we'll just yeah. download it. And we watched it, and we're like, cool, okay, we got around that problem. We didn't give any money to Kevin Spacey. He's like, yeah, but we also didn't help out everyone else on the... And it, yeah, yeah, so you start end up being like, well, that's probably not a good solution so either, really. I will say the bottom line of it is that there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yes, yeah, that, that is, is the real the answer. I mean, that's usually the the incredibly oversimplified, but almost always the bottom line of it. Let's be fucking honest. Yeah. And, so, I, and I think yeah. what you said earlier, Snipe, actually, just being aware of things is probably the best first step you can do, even if you don't yeah, know where absolutely. to go from that. Because you can ignore this this uh, this abysmal shit that that people do at, to each other and to like underlings or their employees, and it's like you could ignore it and just enjoy it anyway, or you could enjoy it and then go, yeah, I liked this, but also fuck this person. Alternate- How fucking dare they? Yeah. Um, the other option is um, to simply wait until uh, the offending people are dead and then you can consume it like uh reading (laughs) hp lovecraft where you can go wow this dead guy is really racist but he is also dead so he is seeing no benefit from me reading his book it's like haha look at this big dead bitch (laughs) um hp lovecraft the big dead bitch I like that actually. I like that a lot. That 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 is one way to approach it. Just uh, wait for people to die. I would say the uh, I I'm not going to judge someone for consuming say like Buffy or like in, or thoroughly enjoying it like nowadays. You know, I'm not going to do that because just because again, something is problematic doesn't mean it's not influential. Exactly, mm. and it's it. Unfortunately, the world is not black and white. The world does not work in binaries. Mm. In, in a binary. And when you're dealing with something like Hollywood or or the um, approaching sort of you know those kind of things where um, it is basically a massive hive of scum and villainy. Of scum and villainy, where people <laughs> are exercising power over other mm. people in ways that are wholly unjustifiable on a daily basis. It basically breeds monsters. So everything that you watch, at least one person in its production, is probably going to be an exploitative piece of shit to a greater or lesser extent. Yeah. Because that's just the ecosystem that it works within. Yeah. And it sucks. But no, I'd say, like, again, my my the personal solution for me is, you know... Again, consume the media if if that's what you if you feel comfortable enough to do so. Because some people might not, mm. uh, some people can stomach that. Um, but be aware of the suffering, and then you know hold these people fucking accountable. It's li- that that's just that. I mean, again, not a prepared statement, mm. which is honestly we need a button for that. <laughs> wow, wow, not a prepared statement. <laughs> but yeah, that's. Yeah, that's basically all. I think if I said anything else, I'd just be repeating myself. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. that's, that's cool. my opinion. I have spoken. You have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's possibly something that would need a bit more thinking about it rather than me just springing on you both in the middle of a podcast. But I just, well, thought, I mean, I, I just thought it'd be an interesting direction to have a bit of a chat about. And Yeah, yeah. no, it, it is a very interesting moral dilemma. Mm. I completely... It, it's incredibly... Uh, tricky so no it's an interesting uh, idea but yeah but i mean that aside that that whole big giant box i can't lift up and put to the side aside we're quite enjoying the the series 
Um, <laughs> it's very, you know, of its era. Some of the costumes oh, are just like, yeah. oh, this is excellent. Like, the stuff they put Alison Hannigan in, where it's like, oh yeah, he's like this stupid little fucking, like, rust-coloured felt hat with a giant plastic fucking sunflower on it, and you're like, I want to die. I do like how a lot <laughs> of the characters... Want to die. I do like how a lot of the characters look like extras from Clueless. Yes! Also, y'all, do y'all like the episode where Xander and a bunch of mates eat the fucking principal? <laughs> yeah, right. They get we possessed. Like, That's not going to go by... there. Oh, no, it went there. Okay. The I, don't is, think Xander, I, don't, I don't think he was, he was involved, right? No, but like it's. I think they do leave it kind of hanging. But, yeah. but it's it's like, oh, he probably didn't, but it's never like directly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I love the idea that he's just like, he's like, yeah, let's just eat. Is it Principal Flutie? Oh, uh, he's something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's like let's just eat the. I mean, he's not been principal. around that long, so I can't. Remember. Is that before Armin Shimmerman came? Oh, in? That's but that's way before Armin mm. Shimmerman uh, was present in kind of like. Middle to later. Because yeah. I have seen like the whole of Buffy, but it was a while ago. Mm. I've I've watched the whole thing three times. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. the music episode is fucking phenomenal. I love it. Also, the one thing that still every time, every now, every time I think about Buffy or whatever, I think about this. But um, the guy that plays Spike. James Masters? Yeah, uh, yeah, played Piccolo in um, Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, the live action one, because he is a super, he's a big super fan. duper huge, massive Dragon Ball Z fan. Yeah. He must and be I so just, disappointed with himself. I think he's just disappointed. If I remember rightly, he's the, he's the only reason Piccolo's green in that movie. Because <laughs> he's cause, like, no, Piccolo's green! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, and like, you know, fair enough. Like, I, I could not give less of a shit about Dragon Ball, but like, you know, I, I felt I felt bad for the people, for the fans I, for that movie. Yeah, no. Because, um, oh my God, can you imagine? But yeah, um, Buffy. Yeah, Buffy's good. The very last thing I just wanted to say is that we finished um, Ghost Giant, the VR game that we've been playing. Oh, yeah. Ghost yeah. Giant. Yeah, it's really lovely. It's like, it's, it's, um, so content warning and spoiler warning, but basically it kind of the, the background story. So they're not the direct story of the the kid you're like playing with, but the background to to him and the sort of setup of the whole thing is about like depression and mental health stuff, kind of just floating in the background. And it's got a really lovely like end that like wraps up the whole thing nicely because it's sort of like, is it just doing this to like get the emotions or get the? But it and you're like, mm, okay, it's probably fine. But yeah, and then it gets to the end. You're like, oh no, that wrapped up really nicely. And it's just quite ends up quite positive. Not that we were sort of expecting it wouldn't be, because you know most things usually end up quite nicely. But yeah, really yeah. good, really good game. It's slightly janky in terms of the actual gameplay. Sometimes various bits clip through things or stick through things, or it's, but then it's coded yeah. by like three people or something. So like you know, that's, that's, that's pretty good. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. It's yeah. you can you can allow a bit of a bit of little bit of jank. But yeah, yeah, very very satisfying story. Fun little game. Recommend yeah. it if it's on. Whatever VR platform you have, if you're, you know, Bobo enough to have a VR platform. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bobo, you say? Yeah, posh, fancy. Oh, is that what that... I, oh, I've never heard that term before. It's because bourgeoisie is really hard to spell. <laughs> That's what you say, bougie. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Finished. Hmm, cool. Snipe. Yes, friend. What have you been up to? Well, I've actually done some stuff. Ooh. Yeah, right? I'm as surprised <laughs> as you. So I'm going to start off with, and this is going to surprise a lot of people, mm. a horror movie I watched. <laughs> nice. Shock horror. Shock nah. horror. Nah. 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 Called Investigation 13, which, now, it is not a good movie. No, that sounds like a B movie. It's <sighs> oh shit! I've just remembered which movie you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, that one about. where you were like, "I need to go to bed," and I'm like, "There's seven minutes left," and you were like, "I need to see how this bullshit finishes." <laughs> okay, so from the bat, it's not a good movie. Uh, it it falls back on some really fucking annoying mental health, like you know, crazy people are the real like terror kind of like bullshit. Mm, okay. Um, it uses spooky Native American magic. It's okay. but like. I can't hate it because it, it honestly I was moderately entertained because it was so fucking bad. <laughs> and like okay, so the story is um 
there's a group of like college students and the main girl I can't remember her name because I've I can't remember any of their names because I've slept since then um, she has a bad wig and the only person in it that can fucking act <laughs> <laughs> And they, they're doing like a, oh, let's do a video about this haunted fucking, like, ex asylum. And it's, it's like, it's like talking about this guy and it's like, it cuts to really badly drawn, like, like storyboards of like this guy who like, oh, his parents like were drug addicts and abused him. So obviously that means that he is inherently evil. The Which, way these are animated, I can best compare. Okay, animated is a is doing a heavy fucking job there. Do you remember those kind of escape the room games from Newgrounds, where someone <sighs> would with the basic with basic flash programming knowledge would make these little little escape like kind of point and click adventure puzzles to like escape an area, yeah. and they were all really bad. But they didn't know how to draw, and then they'd have to like <laughs> draw people. Yeah. That's what it looks like, and the quality of animation. I'm talking about 2004 Newgrounds here. <laughs> it's it's really, I mean, they obviously didn't have the budget to, like, film them live action. And honestly, good on them for trying something, but I would have been like, no, because it's whiplash. They're, like, it's it, there's no point. It has no relevance within the, the, the presentation of the story. But anyway, um, and it's like, oh, this nurse comes in and this guy's like getting like electroshock therapy all the time because he killed his parents and scalped them. And it's like okay, woo, he scalped his parents for being shits. Okay, woo. Scary and that 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 deserves like 10,000 volts every 20 minutes or fucking whatever. And then this new woman like new nurse comes in and she has like this fucking dinner plate sized dream catcher necklace and I'm like, "Oh great." Here We've we got go. the fucking white girl from fucking Pinterest, like I just like I just really attune to people's energy, and I you know I just I just feel like you know I belong here. This is my my job in the universe, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna make some karmically correct things, and you know you know that kind of like that that kind of weird phase that some people go through. Anyone who's like ASMR thing gets uh, triggered by that, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, and she, he's like, no more electroshock. And the voiceovers on these cartoon parts are really badly acted. It's very entertaining. And she's like, oh no, sweetie. I'm not going to electrocute you. I'm going to, you have an evil in you. Do you know what this is? It's a dream catcher. And it's like, yeah, that are typically hung above someone's bed. Like what, your tits are having bad dreams? What the fuck is going on? Because it's supposed to catch... <laughs> The bad dreams in like, like the, 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 the webbing. Like, it's like the PS1 game Nightmare Creatures, except it's Nightmare Titties. Nightmare Titties, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And like she's then she does some fucking Native American incantation to quote unquote banish the evil in him. And it's like, okay, and then it cuts to modern day, and the the group of fucking college students meet up with an old woman, and I'm like, that's the nurse. Spoiler alert, it's the fucking nurse. Um and then it's just they're like oh they're wearing like glasses like like cameras on their glasses and they're like yeah no we'll we'll get locked in here until morning and just film shit and of course like you know they're getting knocked off one by one and it's just really really silly and the bad guy is just this skinny old like guy in new rocks and but the thing he's got like superpowers but then it never talks about like his his like weird native american spell that was cast on him and then at the end because it's like he like eats people or something he's like a cannibal and then like you see the old woman coming at the end and she just drops a bunch of rats into the fucking place and then leaves and then it's like you see the guy's hand jump out and he grabs a rat and the rat's like oh fuck <laughs> it's actually very cute <laughs> and it's like okay so he eats rats then he's just filled up on like five college students he's like a snake he just has to he, he eats them all at once and then he's just kind of a big like mass like for f several months of the year just like oh <laughs> stick a fork in me i'm done yeah and she just has to go in and like, I don't know, rotate him or something but yeah it was <laughs> it, I, I don't know what the like i'm not saying that every movie has a moral but like you know how there's always that kind of like ooh, yeah what is this movie about? Yeah, it's 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 about like college students going to an ex asylum 
and then dying. It's that's literally it. And then there's like the Chad character who's such a bad actor. It's so funny. Especially because like you can almost see him reading the fucking cue cards. I, I remember when I saw a bit of it, I was like, one of these people is definitely a YouTuber. It's got it feels like that kind of movie. So you know, um, <laughs> you know the guy who um, the really bad actor who's like that's obviously like the YouTuber. He is the only one of them that has an IMDb page, and it's like this moody like like blue and pink lighting shot, and it's like yeah, you're a fucking he, you were right. <laughs> like he's. Almost certainly a fucking YouTuber. And it's like, no, I don't care who the fuck you are. I want to know who the only person who could act in it was. <laughs> she was pretty fucking cool. But yeah, and it was just... Like, there was loads of people who I think were probably just, like, either trolling or friends of the director going, this is the best movie ever. It was scarier than Saw. And I'm like, Saw isn't scary. It's disappointing. One thing that I have learned is that um, I can never trust horror movie reviews because the things that I tend to like in horror movies are not what other people like in horror movies. So I, oh, I you're, basically... You're, oh, you're different, yeah. No. <laughs> basically, I couldn't give a shit about gore and stuff. It's... No, I'm not, I ain't a gore hound, mm. but it's just kind of like, okay. The, the, it just felt quite pointless. I mean, there were um, certain parts in it that were quite funny. Uh, just because of how ineffectual or badly edited it was. Like, the lighting in a lot of scenes is a bit... It, like, the lighting in it throughout the entire movie... Okay, so let me let me get my film student here out. The mise-en-scene is completely fucked. It's Pardon? fucked. <laughs> so it's like... The lighting throughout the entire movie... In light areas, it is warm light. It is warm, soft light that you'd see in, like, an American fucking, like... Uh, soap opera mm. and it's like no 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 no. that's the wrong that's comfortable lighting you need to make me feel uncomfortable you know it's like it, <sighs> it's not even going for like harsh fluorescent lighting which that would has be unsettling coldness. and have a coldness there but no no it's just i mean lighting in and of itself is an art form oh 100%. and i'm not saying i know how to fix it i'm just saying that that's the feels <laughs> it's like obvious art. we don't know how to fix it you've seen our videos right yeah right but no, and like, yeah, there's like certain parts that are really funny, like certain lines that are just completely fucking flubbed on the delivery. And it's like, can you imagine how bad the reject takes were? But like, honestly, it's like, look, they tried, I guess. And I, I can't hate it. It's just, eh, it's fine. Um, okay, onto the good stuff. Right, you all ready? Mm. I watched Deadpool 2 and I love that movie. It's so much better than the first one. Not just because it has, like, my 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 baby child, Nathan Summers, in it. <laughs> whom I love. My sweet baby boy. Who's played by Josh Brolin, which I didn't realise that Thanos was also Cable. <laughs> That's kind of fucking legit. Um, it's... It feels like the movie doesn't concern itself as much with, like, the whole... Oh yeah, let's just have Deadpool singing the Spice Girls because ha, ha that's funny, and it's got a lot more heart to it. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's a lot more emotional. I cried a lot. I laughed a lot. Um, the oh, there's a kid in there. Uh, there's a mutant kid who's a um, a plus size uh, Kiwi kid. Mm. So he's a plus size New Zealander, and I love him. That kid yeah, is he's great, such right? a good actor. <laughs> I was just like. Fuck, it's like, also, I, I love the Kiwi accent. because like, oh, call me Firefast. <laughs> and I'm like, Kiwi! <laughs> hey! Yes! I love that kid so fucking much. He was absolutely amazing. Uh, Domino, I'm not into ladies, but if anyone was going to push me over that edge, fuck me. <laughs> Domino! Domino! <laughs> Whew, the actress they got to play her is fucking perfect. I love the fact that she's got vitiligo, like, which is why she's got like the little kind of diamond over her mm. eye. And I'm like, this is fucking immense. This is so good. Mm. And like, okay, there's a character in it called Peter. Love him. Mm. Yeah, Dupinder is amazing. I like that it treats Shatterstar with the amount of respect he deserves. Which is none. Which is none. Yeah, Shatterstar is just like, I love it how like, because usually in like a lot of superhero movies, um... There's a lot of, oh, well, we need to, like, establish um, this character who's an alien. We need to establish their entire planet. And it's always rushed and bleh. And he's just like, yeah, I'm from Mojo World. And I'm like, I know what that is. 
and the 80s were a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay, sure, you yeah, come yeah. on in, you know, X Force and everything. And it's just, it's great. And I love that there's a, there's a part where Cable aggressively maintains eye contact with Wade Wilson while applying lip balm from his fucking like bum bag or fanny pack and just gr- like grits out the words you remind me of my wife and he's like I'm sorry and he's like no I said he's like no I heard what you said I'm just really disappointed that you chose to do that while maintaining eye contact and applying chapstick <laughs> and it's like <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. But yeah, no, I, I honestly, I couldn't stop fucking talking about it. I was like, wait, would you watch Deadpool 2 with me? And he was like, fine. And then I was like, this is a good bit. Ah! <laughs> this is, this is, oh, this person gets ripped in half. It's really cool. But yeah, no, it's really cool. And Marina Bakarin is a joy to watch in anything. That woman is from the fucking Feywild. How is she still so beautiful? Mm. How has she not aged in the last 15 years? I know, years? she is so... she she's, she's a fucking elf. She is an elf. She's an elf. Yeah. yeah. Like, she's so gorgeous. And, like, I honestly, I had so much fun with that. And, like, the meta shit, like, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the meta shit, uh, like, during the credits, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's that was a lot so fun. funny. It's It was really good. And, like, all the characters were great. It was, it was nice. But, yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And, honestly, I was kind of worried how they do Cable... But they did in perfect. Because, like, Cable's not even done well in the comics most of the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cable is one of my favourite comic book characters, and you are 100% fucking like, correct. I mean, isn't he a Liefeld creation? He is! So is, like, so is Domino. Yeah. And I think that Shadowstar absolutely is. <laughs> I thought there's a part in it where it's like, oh, wow, like, you're a like, character they're... that looks like you it looks like you were designed by someone who couldn't draw feet. Like, <laughs> yep, you're, thank you for referencing no, he... Liefeld's inability to draw he's feet. He's like, he's talking about how luck isn't a, isn't a mutant power, yeah. and it sounds like something that someone who couldn't draw feet came up with. Yeah. And it's like, eh, I like it. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. Also, he accuses Cable of being from the DC universe because he's so edgy. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> but yeah, I'll stop raving on about that. Cause, but that, but that was very fun. Um, another one, a series I started watching is Narcos, ah, okay. um, which is a Netflix original series um, based on Pablo Escobar, um, and just kind of like the 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 whole big cocaine surge in the uh, late seventies, eighties. I have uh, from Colombia. I have a single fact that I may be misremembering about Pablo Escobar. Is it that he owned a hippo? It's that he owned a hippo. Yes, he owned a hippo. And yes, he just fucking released it. Yeah, he just released it. <laughs> it's just a fuck. There was a fucking hippo running like around just, in Colombia. just Columbia. a small herd of hippos that just live in Colombia now because yeah. he released them. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Makes you buy hippos. <laughs> Makes you buy hippos. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, And the thing is, so I have a complex series of emotions with this because I started watching it because I'm on a Pedro Pascal kick because I just think he's great. Mm. He's goals. He is a sweetheart. And it's just fun to see him play these absolute bastards. Mm. <laughs> um, and he, yeah, he's in it as um, as a um, as a cop. And I'm like, okay, so everyone in here is is a piece of shit, really. Like Pablo Escobar and his mates are fucking terrible. The cops are just shit. And like literally in the in like the fucking first episode, it's like, yeah, so it kind of gives you like a rundown of like you know uh, the whole like trade routes from Colombia to like Miami to sell like all this like this really high grade cocaine and how it just it was just bleeding into Miami and just yeah. fucking everything up and like they were they had mules they had all this horrible fucking shit it was just gross when you talk capitalist when, bullshit when happening you, when you're talking about like the whole like drug wars and things there is no good guys there's just no. There's just dickheads and victims. And yeah, it's just every just it. It, everyone is a piece of shit apart from one character in the first episode. In the first episode, because there's like the main character is a DEA agent white guy called Steve, and it just makes me laugh because he's so fucking generic. 
<laughs> we I'm must like, have generic, uh, generic white American guy. Well, you guy. see, if there's anyone who talks like with an accent, then we won't be able to understand. How am I supposed to put myself in someone's shoes if they're not like this generic white man? Whatever. It's supposed to be loosely based on shit. I mean, obviously, it's going to have a lot of dramatized yeah. stuff, and they're going to either like combine certain people into like a certain character mm. or just remove them altogether if they're not convenient. I appreciate that, but it's still just very funny to me. And he's out bowling with his mates. And his mates, like, while he's bowling, are like, oh, let's pretend that that hot blonde at the bar was checking him out so we could go and tell him to try and chat her up. And then we can laugh when he gets rejected because, you know, ha 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 ha. That's a horrible thing to do. Yeah. Whatever. So she, so he goes up and he's like, hey, how's it going? And she's like, ha, busy. And then just keeps talking to her mate. And I'm like, okay, we stand. <laughs> I don't like the wife because, you know, later on she's like, Oh, there was a 17-year-old drug dealer that you killed? Good, he deserved it. And it's like, um, oh, okay, I'm not even going to start taking to the social, like, political kind of uh, issues there, lady. But sure, <laughs> fucking go off, you rich white bitch. Um, <laughs> yeah, this gives me feelings. Very complex feelings that are not prepared statements. Um, <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, like, you know, and then, like, he realizes that he's been set up by his friends to, to fail. Um, and he's like, Hey, so, uh, you know, my friends over there tried to fuck me up and like, get me to embarrass myself by saying that you were checking out my ass. So, you know, do you want to help me like get one over on them? You know, also it's weird that anyone would be checking out a cop's ass. And she's like, Oh wow, you're a cop. And he's like, Oh, DEA actually. And the friend she's talking to, she turns around and goes, Oh, DEA, like drugs? So you're the prick who's making, like, weed more expensive. <laughs> and I was like, we stand a literal queen. Um, but there is a few, there's, there's one moment that made me laugh so fucking hard. I was scared I was going to make wake Wib up. Because in episode two, it's just fucking. It's like Pablo Escobar gets it on with a news reporter. Fucking Pedro Pascal's just, just explicitly fucking this lady. And then it's like, then like Steve is having sex with his wife because they've got, they've, they've moved to Colombia to help with like, you know, the like drug investigation. And she's like, she's like bouncing all over him and you hear a couple of gunshots and she's like, oh my God, what is that? And he's like still in the throes of passion going, oh, it's probably a 38. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> that is fucking brilliant writing. <laughs> it honestly, it made me laugh so fucking hard. Um, but yeah, seriously fucked up subject matter, but it's also kind of like low key kind of kind of a history lesson, but not really. And it's just it's interesting to see an inter an interesting uh, doorway into learning about the real thing. Yeah, which you know, if you were a fan of Behind the Bastards, <laughs> then you know, I can't remember if he's done a Pablo Escobar. Ah, uh, probably he must have done that. Right? Sure, because like, oh my god, Pablo Escobar was fucking notorious. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that I, I, I've been enjoying that, and just you know, just Pedro Pascal is just a joy to watch. Mm. So you know, it, it's it's been fun. Um, last thing I've been watching is I remember I spoke about reading this manga uh, on the podcast like a year or so ago. Um, Promised Neverland or The Promised Neverland? I can never remember. As an Australian, I like to remove the from the beginning of nearly all of my sentences. Um, but yeah, and I'm still not going to spoil it. Um, but the, um, it was about a bunch of children, uh, who lived with a, uh, a lady adult. They all call mum or mama. Um, and basically there's something sinister going on at this school, like this, this like boarding house. Um, and they're not allowed out the grounds because, you know, it's dangerous out there and, and like basically once they get to 12 years old they are they are always adopted out into the world and you know it's it's a very like from so from 6 to 12 they they get adopted and go out and there's something sinister going on and i read the manga and it i, I didn't read it to completion but i read quite a bit of it and oh my god it gets really dark um and i i really enjoyed it it was it was incredibly intense like like tense is the word i'm looking for um and like watching the manga it's not cgi which i love already because i really don't like the look of cgi anime i mean like it's starting to look kind of okay now but i still prefer like more traditional kind of mm. stuff 
Um, so yeah, and it's it honestly it captures everything very very well. Um, it's got that serious tenseness. Like um, there's a very popular scene in uh, the manga where um, the, one of the main characters, because it's like three main characters, Emma, Ray, and Norman. And they're all like 11. So, you know, they're getting to the age where they're going to go get adopted. And they're all like, oh, I don't want to leave my family, but it's also going to be really cool and stuff. And and she's sad because one of the younger kids got adopted. And, you know, but like there's, there's, a, there's a sinister twist in it. And, you know, Emma knows. And, you know, um, the mum knows that somebody was there to witness um, the adoption because... Uh, like one of them left like the kid's bunny like like a little toy there so she's kind of like Emma's like kind of she puts her hand up against like this corkboard where the little girl's drawing was and then it's like she, it's like the next it's like the Junji Ito page turn mm-hmm. the next turn is just the woman like the mother with this really fucking sinister look on her face just really close to the kids like to her face being like are you okay? And it's just like, that literally gave me like a jab of like, f- like fear in my stomach. When I read that, <laughs> it frightened me. I was like, Oh fucking hell. Okay. And they did that, which honestly I knew it was coming. So it didn't get me as bad, but yeah. And oh, no, I, I it, it, they've truncated a bunch um, of it. So, you know, it's like, it's kind of happening quicker and it's like, no, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's, it is very tense, so yeah, no. It prom- the Promise Neverland, like it's it's good. It's a good anime. Deals with some kind of dark, t- dark kind of like subject matter, but it is it is worth a watch. So yeah, cool. I, I, I'm not going to spoil anything because okay. yeah. But no, that's uh, that's that's all I've been up to. Which I have been up to stuff, and I'm happy. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I guess then we should move on to questions. Questioning. So, uh, yes. Matthew. Yes. Drummond Matthew. Mm, I called yes. him Drum- Drummelkins earlier. I don't know if you like that. Was well, that when you weren't calling him Trainfucker? Yeah. That, uh, when, he, when he texted me earlier, going, hey, we're recording, and I'm like, yes, Drummelkins. Uh, uh, well, what's the email address people should send questions to, Matthew? Sorry, I was stretching. Um, uh, unacceptable. Just, need to have a quick come. <laughs> okay, uh, it's uh, only drummer Matt nope. at gmail nope. Nope. dot com. Nope. No. Nope. It's no. the the drummer Matt because only Mim suggests I wasn't passing it on to you. So the drummer Matt means that I might occasionally tell you what's going on as well. So <laughs> please, please confirm the email address because of that fucking mess. <laughs> yeah, that was a mess. The drummer Matt at gmail dot com. Oh, <laughs> almost got it wrong. Fucking nerd. Okay, right. what are the questions, friend? Okay, Jeez. first up, very important question here from Six Foot yes. Alligator. What Hello. I love your... you, Six Foot Alligator. One day I will like let you live in my house. I don't want to own you because that implies that you know you're not a sentient being. But I yeah. mean, Six Foot Alligator is a cuddly toy, so yeah, I know. That's what I was I'm yeah. saying because I've been going on about that fucking know, Six Foot Alligator. <laughs> what? Yes. Is your opinions? What are your opinions on coleslaw mm. as a food? Sucks. Fuck coleslaw. Fuck it. Okay. What's a coal and why can you slaw it? It's bullshit. <laughs> it's gross. It's fucking lame. Wow. Sloppy bullshit. Shit. It's like, it's like, it's like giant cum and I hate it. <laughs> okay, well, the second part of the question is, is it okay to eat on its own or only as a side? I guess neither, as far as you're concerned. <laughs> no, you shouldn't be eating that six foot alligator. I can, I'm concerned. But I'm concerned like... for you. It's salad that's improved with lots of mayonnaise. What's wrong? What's coleslaw is great. Coleslaw well, look, in, look, in a look. burger with chips. Oh, oh God. look, just Matthew. use lettuce, you fucking psychopath! Yeah, but, but then look, you it's put fine. mayo on it's your fine. lettuce, and then it's coleslaw. No, no, no. Look, it's fine. We are a. We, this is a democracy. At okay. the end of the day, which no, means comes to fucking coleslaw. Which means that no. because both of us think that it is gross slop. Officially, it's gross slop. Well, no, because presumably, wrong, presumably, presumably Six Foot Alligator likes it, otherwise they wouldn't be asking, so it's a two-all draw, actually. Well, they no, don't have a voice. Uh, they are not here in person they to argue their case. Six Foot Alligator in this fucking race. Coleslaw is banned. Okay, well... Coleslaw is violence. <laughs> Apologies, Six Foot Alligator. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like it for what it's worth. I think it's great. Well, I wouldn't really have it on its own. 
because uh, it's, it's, for, it's for going on chips, as far as I'm concerned. No! Oh, um, my God. Anywho. Oh my all right, let's God. move on before before Snipe gets far too angry. <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> before I get far too angry? <laughs> Fair. <laughs> okay, next up, Nathan. Nathan uh, uh, is an Australian. I'm... Okay, so every time you say Nathan, I think you're actually talking, talking to, to you. me. Talking to you, yeah. 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 In Hello. this case, I'm not. But Nathan is an Australian, so that gets hey, it blurs more lines. Um, I feel I should mention it, that because uh, it was a while ago, uh, Nathan was the name of Snipe's D&D character for a while. Still is. He's not dead. <laughs> Yet. Oh, fuck. <laughs> anyway, hey, Nate, how's it going, man? Um, How you so going? So, first off, this isn't the question they asked, but throughout the, you know, quite often people write in, there'll be like a paragraph or whatever of like preamble saying various bits and bobs, and I'll pick out a question. Drawing Nathan's introduction preamble of the thing, they mentioned that they're Australian, but they also mentioned... They said the phrase, that's enough pissing in pockets. <laughs> and I wanted to ask Snipe, as another Australian, is that an Australian phrase or is that just a weird phrase? <laughs> I ain't I, been there I look, for a I while. Because I love it, but I was like, is that just normal Australian talk? I ain't been there for a while, but that does sound very... <laughs> it does like, sound Australian. It that, sounds, that sounds true, boy, mate. That sounds a true spot. It does feel like something that should be more widespread. It's like the whole, we're not here to fuck spiders. Come on. I do like when I hear spiders. I do like that one. I am here to fuck spiders, and I Apart, still... and we're not here to fuck spiders, except for spiders fucking Yorg. But he's an outlier and should not be counted. Oh my god! He must he fuck like two hundred and fifty thousand spiders a year. Fucking yeah, he god, fucks wow. all. He fucks all the spiders that other people swallow. <laughs> Okay. But you know what? I don't even want to know if it's before or after. But yeah, no. Uh, Fun fact. I don't know. Anyway, everyone... enough yeah. pissing in people's pockets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if people know this, but the whole thing about eating spiders in your sleep is literally a um, a falsehood spread to prove that falsehoods spread really easily. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Hmm. Um. Anyway, Nathan's actual question. Okay. As fellow miniature painters, do you struggle to find motivation to get the backlog painted? And if so, how do you conquer it? <laughs> I haven't paid a model at six fucking months, mate. Um, uh, yes, I, <laughs> I struggle immensely because of mental health and just general motivation issues. Wib, however, decides to publicly kink shame himself into getting <laughs> models painted with his painting log. Over on his YouTube channel, his solo YouTube channel, Wib does vids. That is not its name. Wib does stuff. That is its name. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know you, like... Like the email address, the email address yeah. for it yeah. has that in it, so I got confused. But yeah, so uh, yeah, Wib basically is like publicly flagellating because I think it gets him off. But like, we're not here to kink shame unless that's your kink, in which case you're very naughty. I just passed uh, seven thousand subscribers on that that channel, oh, by the way. Nice, nice. I've got that. I, I get that every week on my OnlyFans. I actually do. Then have why don't you help with the rent? Because it's my money. <laughs> a bird took it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what, what, what I have done and what has helped me is that I have um, sort of gamified a bit the whole my process. Brain, you have included the public in your problem. Yeah, well, I, I've made it into a thing where I have to like achieve a certain amount in a certain time frame. Like I started off by doing that by making the painting, my painting log videos where... I basically established that I wanted to paint at least one model a week. Um, because I then had to show people at the end of the month, or these days I do it every two months for logistical reasons, um, it means that I like have a reason to like sit down and go, okay, so I've not painted much this month. I should I should sit down and do it, because otherwise I won't have the things for the video. I basically have like put this like pressure on me to get it done. Um and likewise, I've done um, hobby streaks on Twitter for quite a few times uh, where you take a photo of what you've done each day and see how many days you can keep it going. My record is 100 days where I actually stop doing it at 100 days. I personally would have stopped at 69, but then again, I am an individual I, of refined taste. I wouldn't have beat my previous record of 77 days, though, if I'd have done that. Okay, 77 is punk as fuck yeah. and also Star Wars, so nice one. Yeah. But 69 is the sex number. I know, I know. Um, but yeah, I, I found that that helped because it's because the real trick um, I found is you have to make these things become a habit. It's, um, I, th I find it's difficult to do that shit as you get older because you mm, just can't be bothered. Yeah, especially it's, if you've not got the time to like, do it. Mm. Like um, I, you know, I'm I'm lucky. 
I, I I make fucking YouTube videos for a living. I have the time each day uh, to to be able to do that because I'm not commuting all the time to get back and forth. So I have like you know hours a day that. Although uh, total fu- power play, you set up like a wet pallet and a fucking like painting station on the bus in the morning. I mean, some people do do that. They paint on the train and shit. Some people do. I mean, do that. on the train. That makes I wouldn't sense. do it on the bus. You go all over the place, but yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. That's a yeah. total power play. Uh, I mean, it depends on how on uh, how neat and, tabletop ready is to you, and how distracted you are on trains. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're fucking them, <laughs> I can imagine you'd be quite distracted. Just don't don't try and paint on a train that Matt is fucking because the, the, con- the constant like you're constantly going back and forth like if, if, finger if, shuddered. If, okay, so if drummer Matt <laughs> fucked a bullet train, I think you'd be okay painting on one of those because they're like notoriously stable and smooth. Like you see the whole coin thing. On like on its mm. side as like the bullet trains go on. Bullet trains are really cool. They are cool. And like drama map. Especially when they make animes about transforming bullet trains that are sometimes an Eva unit. Okay, um I'm I will not foster this behavior. Um uh, we're talking about drama anime, fucking trains. Please, anime is so stupid. I, I love know, it. I know. <laughs> but yeah, so don't like try not to paint on a train that drama map is fucking unless it's I a guess bullet train, the, yeah. in which case Fill your boots, friends. Uh, but yeah, the basic uh, the basic thing is just it, to try and do things that make it into a habit. Like when when you when you start doing something like a hobby streak, where you are doing it every day, um, even if it's just like like fifteen minutes, just painting a single coat of paint on something, it then gets you into the habit of it of doing it each day, and it stops being like, oh, I've not painted for like six months. I should I should paint it. That puts like so much pressure on you to just get it done whereas if it's like a little bit every day you kind of start putting it into oh I've, so I've got to like uh, I've got to make my dinner and I've got to um, sort out um, you know sorting out my washing and then um, oh yeah I've got to get my painting done for the day and it just becomes another little like a chore is the wrong word but it becomes part of part your of a routine, routine. Um, it's yeah. basically like exercise yes yeah. e- even mm. just like five minutes matters mm. So, like, you know, even if it's just, oh, I'm going to walk a little bit faster when I go to the shop. So I'm just like, you know, while I'm watching this or waiting for my dinner to cook, I'm just going to lay a bit of paint on this. Yeah, it's it's literally the same thing. It's just you make this you make this stuff. And especially if you've got a big backlog um, and and you'll find that you start chipping through things quite quickly. And also you'll find that you'll um You'll be able to, like, you'll be getting better because you're doing it every day. So it gets a lot easier as well. So, mm. yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Good, Good advice there. All right. Uh, Nathan, last point was that if they were a dinosaur, it would be an allosaurus. That's a good Fair choice. They are strong, very strong solid. Choice. Nice one, Nathan. Brandon. Brandon opens with saying, what bones of an animal would I wear? I want a spooky unicorn skeleton. Good choice. They, they said they'd make it work. I don't quite know how, but I mean, there's I not mean, many school. ways that you can not work that. I mean, to be honest. there's like I can never remember the Welsh word for it, but there's like that horse skull that just shows up at your house and is like demands to be let in. Does it sing songs? It sings songs at you, um, and then you, and then you let it in. It's an actual Welsh tradition. Drama Matt, stop being so insensitive. Hey, no, I didn't say anything. It, yeah, it's a it's a mythological. It's thing like Mary and, the and Weed people, or something. L- people, the weird or I can't remember. And people dress up as it. Yeah, uh, and it's really it's really cool. Yeah. I was um, I was literally about to reference that because I was going to say, well, horse schools were already rad as shit. They Just are ask very, the Welsh. Yeah, they're very <laughs> fucking cool. So that 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 is, I, I, they are an individual of taste and refinement. Mm. <laughs> nice. Well, Brandon's question. Mm-hmm. You're put in charge of a mar- of marketing a real non forty k product. That is dangerous. But using 40k lore or elements. So, for example, like Guardsman brand uh, or themed soap or towel crisps. So okay. you have you have a marketing team, graphic designers and the like. What product are you selling and how? Iron Hands Sex Fists. <laughs> it's like the Belladonna Bitch Fist. It's like the Belladonna Bitch Fist, but it's just it's just silver like silicon. The biggest one they sell is the Ferris Manus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But manus is capitalized because it looks like man anus. <laughs> that was unnecessary. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, I'm pretty sure you said the same thing to me when we were taking our vows. Really. <laughs> that was unnecessary, but well done. <laughs> <laughs> I answered that a little too quickly, didn't I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, what about you two lovely gents, eh? Ah. Uh... <coughs> 
how about like uh, Blood Angels Black Pudding? Ah, yeah, that could yeah, work. yeah. That's an incredibly English answer. But there's, sure. there's a picture. There's a picture of like a smiling Lamates on the front. Beautiful, <laughs> absolutely lovely. He's smiling behind the helmet. You have to just have to accept that he is. It's got. It's got like one of those anime porn things where it's like slightly X-ray, and you can just see a big pair of teeth. I wish I hadn't had to think about that weird anime porn x-ray thing Well, you're today. welcome. You know what? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Doing real good. <laughs> Matthew, what's your answer? Oh, so, uh, my answer, I don't really care what the product is. So, let's just say, I don't know, it's like a pack of printer paper or something. It doesn't really sorry, matter. I've just had, I'm sorry, I've just had the phrase, um, like, sanguinosage appear in my head. Sanguinosage. Sanguinosage. Yeah. Yeah. See, you could also right. have, like, cereal... But it's like Kato Sicarius, so it's Kato's. Kato's, that'd be, yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good yeah. 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 Sorry, huh. sorry. I, that this, no, uh, no, that no, entered right. my brain and I had to say it. I do like the way you asked him for his input and then immediately interrupted him. <laughs> Um, yeah, so for mine, I think it doesn't really matter what it is, but the marketing department will just, like, employ, like, an actual space marine to just stand Ooh. in supermarkets with, like, their bolter and just, like, aggressively shout at anyone to buy the thing and like just he's, he's like 10 foot whatever you go to like tesco or whatever and you're like buy this printer paper with like a full size but i feel like you just buy whatever it is shit that you're selling it doesn't really matter what the thing is basically I put the middleman out of advertising and because it's all manipulative nonsense anyway, yeah exactly so. yeah. Just scream at them yeah i think what would be really cool though is if there were like it's like oh yeah these aren't like like space marines like new crackers or whatever and it's just like they have like a fucking chain sword of one hand and like a big tray of like ritz crackers with like cheese on them and they just violently thrust free samples <laughs> at you and if you don't take one they rev the chain sword yeah like, yeah that's the thing like, like it doesn't it doesn't matter I'm what you're saying i'm lactose intolerant <laughs> okay never mind how about, how about? um yeah raven... i'm fairly sure you're more chainsaw intolerant than any amount of lactose intolerant i actually mm. you do you know that everyone in the world is at least a little bit chainsaw intolerant <laughs> at least a little bit at, at least, least a little, a little bit, bit. Yeah. yeah i'm not yeah but you're not um, you're not of this world so you don't count that's fair that's fair and yeah. i have been i i like first time i ever used a chainsaw i was eight years old your parents were That's very not bad. That's a big enough number. No, it's no. not. It um, is really not a big enough number. Um, there, I, I like the idea of like maybe Raven Guard like ice cream cones because they're shaped like their beaky helmets. Huh. Or they could be. Yeah, yeah. Or you could have like little ice poles where it's like um, Corvus is Corvus pattern uh, Corvus ice cream cones. Ice cream. <laughs> or you could have like you know those kind of like um, uh, those ice creams on a stick where you get the bubble gum, like Buffalo Bills and stuff like that. You could get that, but it's Wait, like... Wait, what? Buffalo Bills? Yeah. You get Buffalo... In Australia, there's like this um, this ice cream, and it's like this weird, like, cowboy, and he's got a big, like, uh, chewing gum for a nose, and it's Buffalo Bills. I imagine they okay. probably... Did they not change the name after Silence of the Lambs came out? Nah. Uh. I'm, I might be remembering it incorrectly, but yeah, basically <laughs> just have that, but it's like Magnus the I mean... Red's head, and just, like, he's got, like... The single... The single gum- art, like, the gumball... <laughs> Which I, I mean, don't believe he's an actual Cyclops. Like, I personally believe he has two eyes, but he's missing one or whatever. So it's That's just usually like, how it's presented. Yeah, because yeah. I see it kind of like, it's like Odin, where he, like, you know, plucked out his eye mm. for some of that, like, uh, for the bones of um, Mimir. Mm. Uh, in fairness, because you've not, you've not read the books that have Magnus nah. in. They, they straight up just say that's how it is. Yeah, that's, that's how I personally see it. So it's like, yeah, he's just got, like, one big, like, blue eye on, like, the right-hand side or whatever, and it's mm. bubblegum, and it's really shit bubblegum that turns grey and loses its chomp immediately. It's basically, it's blue tack. Mm. You ever yeah. chewed blue... Have, have you ever chewed blue tack because you were too poor for, like, um, chewing gum? I didn't do it for that reason, but I did do it. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted it, I wanted all the kids in school to think I was cool, so I just chewed a big hunk of white tack, and I was like... Uh, okay. Well, that's just... that's kind of just sad on lots of levels. Oh yeah, right. The <laughs> fact that chewing gum was a fucking st- like a status thing. Fuck you, England. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Any- moving on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hello. If the chaos gods were real, which fast food chain would each own? <laughs> Oh my fucking god! No, Highly a... important question. And I, I also... can't remember. I didn't. I didn't copy this bit out, but I'm fairly sure the sentence before there was. If it's not been asked already, I was like that is not been asked already. If, if, yeah. We have not had to answer that question before. Do do not worry. I, you know, I'm gonna be honest. Like the questions in like 
in in this like that have been sent are oh, incredibly That's fantastic, aren't they? <laughs> incredibly fantastic and high quality. Not that the usual ones we get are bad or like not good. It's just this the quality of these questions. They're so like okay, that how the fuck did you come up with that? That's brilliant. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. I've got a good way to break this down. Okay. Yeah, so- okay. Which uh which um of the um fast food chains would you consider to be the most violent? Oh god, how long Subway. Like, oh, why Subway? Because, like, I don't know, I think my, my view of Subway comes down from Community, where they have, like, an actual person that they legally changed, like, their name to be Subway, and then it just <laughs> it's just ominous. So they're, like, you know, in the background violent, but not, like, all up in your face, but they're, like, well, sinister. That's... I'd say I'd say I would classify um, Subway as more Zinchian. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's more Zinchian because it's aha than... my my fucking meatball sub just as planned. It's like yeah, yeah okay, mate, you told okay, me what you wanted. Okay. I mean okay. that's just me personally. So we, we're roundabout way we've decided uh, Subway is Zinch. Yeah. Um, cool. But yeah, if we're talking about like outward violence, oh, um, steakhouse, oh. like an outback steakhouse. I do not know about them. I couldn't say that. That's, that, that's not really fast food now. Okay, steakhouse. how about Applebee's? Are you to- are you talking about things that we will have never been to. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, Red Rooster. What is that? <laughs> it's an Australian barbecue chicken chain. Okay, because I was going to go for most violent. It's probably KFC. Have you seen how many chickens oh, the colonel has killed? That Personally. is a good point. But I was going to go Nurgle for KFC just because of the gravy. I feel like Nurgle is quite gravy. But okay, you're, you're probably but right in a more depressing I level. I want to drink that gravy. I want to bathe in it. I yeah. want to... Therefore, it's probably not Nurgle. Yeah. Mm. I'd right. say maybe, I'd say KFC is like, I'd say that gravy is at least Slaneshi. We'll get there. Because it gives we'll me impure gravy Okay, thoughts. so Zinch is Subway, um, KFC mm. is corn. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, right. Um, which, which one is the most likely to make you shit yourself violently? Chipotle. <laughs> I've never been, but their reputation does. Yeah, that does kind of yeah. precede them. And it's not it's not even Mexican food, so what the fuck is the point? It's, yeah. yeah. Um, so that would just leave us with which fast food chain do we think is either... Um, the, the sluttiest. The, sl- <laughs> the <laughs> sluttiest pizzeria in your I was gonna area. Say the mo- I was going to say uh, the, most, uh, the most sexual one. Or alternately, if you want to go by the actual definition of Sunesh, Just the me. most excessive. Oh, God. Because I would argue that you could also say like a Five Guys would fit into like the most excessive Slaneshi, because the amount cause... of the amount of fucking fries they give you. Well, I mean that's mm. like straight up a marketing ploy. They have like little fry holders that are too small, so it makes it l- and they give you yeah. loads of fries, oh, so yeah. it looks like you're. Getting and also, one they more give big. you like twice the fries, but it's four times the cost, so it's not actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. So I was it's... talking pure size there, yeah, not okay. counting okay, cost, because okay. it is okay. really yeah. expensive. Yeah. Mm. Which is quite excessive anyway as well. So I, I think five guys say, could, could fit quite well. Mm. I would I would throw my hat in the ring for uh, Slanesh being McDonald's. Now, would you like to know why? Ask me why. I, I would. Why? Okay, okay why? Okay. Because it's this big indulgent thing. There's so many fucking calories in it. It's, and it's just, it's all empty fucking calories. It's so over the top indulgent. And then you're hungry 10 minutes later. Yeah, and you feel yeah. empty afterwards and okay. crave more. Also, mm. Grimace is a sexual deviant. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You've thought about that before, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, he's shaped like a butt plug. It's got, you know what I mean? I mean, he's, he's pretty tiny, large, he's... but okay. But his dick is an exact replica of him, but just smaller. <laughs> With only one eye. <laughs> but yeah, that, that would be my arm. Yeah, right, yeah, right. That's yeah, my two okay. cents. Yeah. Okay. That's my two cents thrown in the ring. <laughs> okay, good, good. I don't think we can top that. Moving on, very no. last question. Um... Hell on Earth. Very f- first up, they had some... Hello on Earth. Hello on Earth. Hello on Earth. <laughs> Hello. That's not their name. You, did you, um, drummer Matt, did you know that one egg is an oof? One egg is an oof. We all heard uh, you. One egg, one yeah. egg is an oof. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, fine. One yeah. egg is an oof. Yeah. yeah. It gets yeah. funnier the more I say it. It, it does, does not. It, it does. does. It, it really does. doesn't. Oh, um, we do. 
Hell on Earth had some background information on the spiky cactuses, which I did not was not aware of. You two probably do, because you know everything. Oh, um, you mean Glib knows everything, and I just sit there going, uh-huh, so, I knew that. Some background info on the spiky cactuses, as seen in yes. the old codexes. First up, they're called spikers, or spikia transformio, according to the Liber that Xenologists. Is, that's fucking great. Mm. And also, I'm guessing they're inedible? Well... I don't know, there's no mention on that, but, but what they are is that each one apparently used to be a living creature that mutated after being shot by another spiker. I, hmm, that's pretty interesting. So they're like, okay, so they're obviously an invasive species. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that means the first one came from. Well, I mean, it's like the whole chicken and the egg Probably thing. Probably Australia. Like, you know, the egg absolutely yeah. came first because what we would define as a chicken, you know... I will be honest. I do not know that because I've never actually thoroughly read that book. So, mm. oh, okay. um, yeah, I thought it was quite that might actually, that might be in the Rogue Trader book. But the problem with that is there's so much bullshit in there that it, <laughs> you know when you read so much and you can yeah. you will only ever remember about a tenth. Yeah, because half of it falls out your brain. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I have often said um, that I don't remember things, but I know, but I know how to research, so I can write a script that is well <laughs> that is well informed. But if you ask me, like out of nowhere, I go, ah, I don't remember. I thought any you'd of this. say, oh yeah, because I know how to read. <laughs> I was like, okay, quit bragging. <laughs> All right, yeah, and, that's fun. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. And then Hell on Earth's um, question, which is the last question. When will we get a beaky painted in Womble colour scheme? Womble. Womble colour scheme. W- womble? As in the Wombles as in, of Wimbledon uh, Common. Uh, there, there was as no in, explanation. <laughs> I presume so. I mean... I, I, the, what, my, new chapter, my new chapter, my new chapter, made of authentic the rogue, Wimbledon tra- rogue trader marines. Um, the uh, Wimbledon Common, Wimbledon Wombles, Common. Wimbledon, um, yeah, Wimbledon. Uh, the Orinoco chapter. Um, what? That's probably a really clever pun. I'm just like uh, Orinoco is the name of the Womble. That sounds like a fucking spice. That's a fucking <laughs> herb. That's a fucking herb. Mate. I could have said Uncle Bulgaria. That's country. <laughs> The Womble's weird. Um, I I presume, I presume that if you look on the internet, someone will have definitely done that at some point. I doubt it. They were called called Womble Marines, like, back in the day. That was the the nickname. Yeah, that was the nickname they had before Beakies. Huh. Oh, it's because they're pointy. Yeah, way back in the day. Because remember, this was in the 80s. Aren't Wombles, like, they're just hedgehogs, aren't they? Like, they're just hoarders. They're hoarding hedgehogs. They clean clean up Wimbledon Common. Yeah, but they're hoarders, though. Yeah, kind of, but they make use of... And also, of, they're essential fucking workers. But they make use... Yeah, they... they where's um, their fucking minimum wage? Where's where, where's their living wage? Yeah, the, the, do you think the government's screwing over nurses? No pay rise for Wombles. <laughs> no pay rise for Wombles. <laughs> also, they are screwing over nurses. Fuck the Tory pie. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, no, because Wombles were, were like the, the a much more popular media thing uh, back when that came out. That was just, uh, Womble Marines was the uh, common yeah. thing that they got called back in the day. Uh-huh. Uh, and these days, Beaky kind of takes over, uh, has kind of taken over as the more dominant thing people call yeah. it. Uh, okay, occasionally see, someone will get really mad at you for calling them Beakies and go, no, they were called Wombles. And you it's go, like, yeah, but... Congratulations, people... Greg. We also disinfect wounds now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I, in my experience, I've only ever see, uh, seen people call it secondhand. But it was a, it was a very real name. People no, no, I did. You know what? I done learned something. Also, because it was very British back in the day. So. <laughs> and it's a bit more, a bit more um, you know, uh, like worldwide. Yeah, days, yeah, so. yeah. Mm. But yeah. But no, that oh, that's cool. Good question mm. there, Hell on Earth. And that brings us to the end of the questions. Oh no. And the, question the end names. of the podcast. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Well, uh I guess thank you very, very much everyone uh for listening and for sending in questions. If you do have a question for us, then uh, you know, send them in to the email address that um the drummer mat at gmail.com. Thank you for getting it right this time. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I thought I'd best say it'd best be said again mm. since there was that whole thing that happened earlier. Yeah, and also I <laughs> want to know what's your favourite type of corn. So, like, do you like corn on the cob? Do you like beber corn? Do I... you like creamed corn? I explicitly do not want to know your favourite type of corn. <laughs> I want to know your favourite kind of corn. My favourite ca- type of corn right now is baby corn. Steamed baby corn. So I a want little to, bit yeah. of butter and it's so oh, good. I want to and know. And I like them when they're a little bit al dente. Can you say al dente or if it's not pasta? Probably. That's fine, right? It's yeah. like, oh yeah, I'd like, I, I nearly broke my ankle. It's just a little bit al dente. You see, personally, I want to know who your favourite womble was. And why was it baby corn? <laughs> no. 
Put no. Why are you going to ruin this for me? Because <laughs> it was already ruined. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you aware. No, no. Anyway, thank you for listening, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.